and expected that I think that that's fine. Okay, so maybe while we are here, maybe just I missed also some of the summaries. So could somebody uh, just give me a brief summary of their impression of the entire different groups, uh, how they have done last week, and how much you know what was like the common problems that happens other than the infrastructure. I think the infrastructure seemed to have been an issue. It's strange that this is the first time that we had encountered that issue, and I don't know what could be the reason. Maybe we, some something got hacked, I don't know. Um, but so maybe just a summary of what they have understood by listening others as well as their own experience, just so that you can summarize it to me. Um, and what was like the highs and the lows? Yeah, Abu Bakr. Uh, okay, so the most of the uh, group, uh, I think there were two, two groups to who actually uh, model the the project, the fine tune the model, and the others have had like problems such as uh, yeah, yeah, apart from the. Crushing it was obvious, but in our case, the crushing part was mostly for tokenization. So uh, I think more RAM was used, and the problem also was the uh, what, uh, what we call uh, an error. Yeah, one one of the rows had error. That's maybe that's why that was crushing. So uh, all in all, in general, uh, I think the big issue mentioned was not uh, touched upon by the groups uh, also on the good part most of them has actually done the modeling parts try to do all the parts with the fine tuning with the problem Great. thanks anyone else in terms of the highs and the lows where in your opinion did people understood the different components i mean can they now estimate i think i was asking you can people now estimate how much like in in a kenyan company comes and asks you okay you know i want uh chatbots that really does well and can handle this and um build that for me and i'll give you a hundred thousand dollars like do you have now the ups and downs or what it takes from from that business objective to the solution in the different components that might be involved. Like, do, do you think people have grasped what, um, or estimate roughly what it takes? And what's your opinion? Yeah, Hilary. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, so I, I think many have, many have grasped so things even though there was a like a, a lot there was a lot of concepts to catch there like uh, you know encoding tokenization and all but uh given the limited time many of grasp uh, kind of the main concepts to train a uh, or fine tune llm including like the different tasks they want to like if you want to for text generation or if you want for classification I think many many can differentiate how to use different base models for those, and also the resources uh, are like knowing uh, how much computation of resources is needed. Uh, many understand that, and if if you are to given like kind of a task like that or a project like that to implement, you kind of know what what you're needed like uh, comp computationally resources like uh, the, the data set how much you you may need to come up with an accurate model and uh, and so on so the apps the apps are like it's it's you can easily come up with a model because there are many existing and pre-trained models there are so much you can easily come up with one uh, easily even using agingface because it's uh, created all of it and the downs are uh, the resources and the learning curve, it's kind of deep. You have to go through so much to understand, even in fine tuning and hyperparameter tuning. Yeah, thank you. 
Great, thanks. Sheila? Um, um, hi, guys. Um, I hope you can hear me. Hi. Yeah, can hear you. Okay, so um, the apps, okay, according to what Hilary had said, sorry, not the apps, the downs, there were the, there was the computational part, like the computational resources. Like if there's something that I have learned, like if someone give me like a job to like do this for them and, and it involved fine tuning, there are some libraries that require a huge amount of space. So the first thing I would look for would be the necessary resources. Like I would ask for, cause I had to use like for inferencing first, let's say for example, I had to use um, Google Colab cause like um, the libraries I was trying to install were really cramping up the space in my laptop. And also the instance, as you've said, the instance was not working. Then the other thing was like to figure out, now knowing how, that, like the models have many requirements, there's the accessibility of the model. And like, for example, the Llama that we use, you had to request access using Meta, Meta Llama. And then also you had to request access for like the, specific model that you're using then there's also part of like if a model is like being upgraded or it's being loaded um you can't use it at the moment so there is also that consideration so i think the apps are learning about how to work on that and how to figure it out like how to accessibility of the models and also resources and figuring out other places other avenues to use and having an online an online based platform for working then the downs were like not being able to fully fully understand um the concepts because of not being able to actually work on the fine tuning myself on my end because like i didn't have the resource capabilities thank you wonderful thank you guys really helps um so i think we are going to be of course increasing like in terms of our so now Maybe just one last question for my own interest. How much was the final data someone has um, collected or, you know, if you just say by group or maybe just collect connected groups, you know, how much was by the end? Were you able to say that, yeah, we have collected this amount of data? Were you, were you, well, anyone were able to quantify that? any group, any person, do you, finally, what is the max, like the max you managed to collect? Yeah, Japes. We, we were able to collect uh, process data about 1.4 GB, uh, and we tried sentence piece to tokenize those data, and uh, we find about two, uh, 0.4 million tokens. So that was our data. 4.4 million. 2.4 million. Uh, 2.4 million. Okay. But we noticed that uh, uh, the first question you asked is if someone said, I have this money, and if I invest on this, how can uh, can you be able to do it on a project for a Amharic LLM? That we saw that many many problems are facing because the data that we have is not digitalized you know there are a lot of data in amharic but it's not digital and also it's not public so most probably for the project it will take a lot of money to digitalize uh, the data that we have uh, everywhere so we notice all that too, especially on the books part we were able to uh, get seven books that was digitalized and we were able to put it in that asset, but we know that we have a lot of data and books, but it is not digitalized. So if we spend uh, some amount of money on that, maybe you could get a lot uh, more data. Okay, yeah, that's good. Good observation. Uh, Michael? Okay, th thank you. Uh, from Hugging Face, I managed to see like there is a Faris technology company, so it has like 6.2 million number of rows, and another one is 1 million rows. So there are some like around totally like 7 or 8 million rows of data is available in the Amharic section in a hugging face. Uh, it's not labeled, but maybe for the future reference, can I suggest some methods? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, go on. Okay, like for example, I, I, I was reading something like a concept called data synthesize. Like if you have labeled in good data, you can merge those two. Like for example, uh, I was reading in the in the audio context, in the TensorFlow, there is a library. Like for example, if our data are five data, like the voice one, two, three, four, then by changing my pitch one, two, something like that, I can add another data. It is the same data, but with different uh, another another parameter. So, so instead of like just scraping and uh, uh, searching another data, we can use one data and make it useful for the model to make it many data. I think you can add that in the method of collecting labeled data. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's correct. It's data argumentation is key um, in creating more from one by in, in images usually by changing by rotation because the model needs to learn for example the, the face of a dog not only from one angle but also when it's rotated right or symmetry in a mirror things like that so that they call it symmetric and argumentation in general so i think that's correct um the same in, in text so great okay so we had roughly about 10 um so about 10 million, probably somewhere around, if we just assume rows means uh, about four tokens, 8 million. So it's about, let's say, 30 million tokens uh, plus maybe what Japan is two point. So if we collect, we probably would have around 50 million maybe tokens uh, for Amharic. And I'm not sure how much was for um for Swahili that people found but it is something that i would say um okay now you know also the challenge like and when when facebook says they have trained it on 10 trillion tokens now you know the order of magnitude that that the data that they have right so it's um it's important to pay attention to those numbers but fantastic so the most important parts i think uh, hopefully not only the people who spoke, uh, Shayla, Hillary, um, Japez, Michael, and Abu Bakr, but others have understood. Um, and it's just a matter of time, but you, you, you got it and you agree with them that the intricates, the details, the ups and downs were similar. Now, as we, we will continue to, of course, con using, so, so far we were trying to much more understand. I mean, if you think of it, the last two, two weeks, projects were a lot more about thinking about data, thinking about the tech stack, and thinking about the inner workings of uh, a transformer model, and, and learning about you know, each of these components, each of these pieces separately. And it is for us, we were not a lot more in the application. So if you, if you think of it, uh, in any field, there are layers. So the very first layer is called the abstract, the very abstract layer the mathematical or the philosophical layer, right? So that, that part is where people really think whether it's a law or AI or, you know, some uh, mechanical engineering, there is a certain concept, as a, you know, what it means mechanical, what it means so that the level of philosophical uh, or mathematical abstraction level. And then as you go up, then you have the scientific or the science components, the basic science component of it which means it is now domain specific a lot more and it focuses on, on the basics. It's not application level, but it's more, much more if you know, in a computer science, then there are, you know, like the logic people and, uh, you know, the people who really just, what is, you know, constructing basically the machine language component. So they do a lot more research, basic science, and also from coding, even software engineering perspective, there are people who really think about what a software is and in terms of like, you know, which mathematical theory is suitable for which mathematical, you know, for which model, for example, classes, what are classes, what are object oriented, what are this, what are that. So there is a level uh, of that, that is the basic research. And then there is applied science, the applied science level of that field normally is now takes something and tries to solve 
using the basic understanding, the basic science, tries to devise lots of formalisms, for example, frameworks and things like that. And then there is the application layer. So the very, like the engineering layer, it's a, and, the, and the application layer is much more like the consumer level um, component. So the engineering is in between the application layer and of course the, the basically the other components that makes it run. So now we are gonna go into that layer. So for the AI, for the generative AI component that we have been doing a lot more, as I said, it's a much more application area. So the last two weeks were in application science. So that means you were trying to do the component study and learn what makes a generative AI model you know, the components of it from model as well as from data perspective. Now you go up, now you are an application layer or a user level um, um, developer. In that sense, you, you now would learn the components of like what users use within the generative AI. And the main component in that level is RAG. So this is um, a retrieval gen uh, argumented generation. And this is basically, you know, a lot more synthesized or built on top of the in-context learning nature of um, generative AI models. So what it means in-context learning, I think the very first thing you should read is in-context learning. What, you know, what makes, when, when LGPT3 first came, the very essential component was that everybody was researching what is in-context learning because it is, you know, all the models we know so far has been before GPTs where a lot more, you give them features or you give them some, like, you know, like, uh, an image and it outputs something, right? Um, but you were not able to give it, to train it more or less to, sh to change it is outcome by giving a context. So the context didn't have, I mean, there was no model that was predicting based on the context. That means the, the training already, you know, it, it is being trained even when it's doing inference. So that's like the in-context learning. So the, the GPT era, or, you know, what the essence of RAGS is that given that they demonstrated, you know, you can read from, it's not even that far, it's 2022, that a lot more, well, the sensation was on in-context learning do really LLMs can actually learn from the context that they are given, right? And yeah, it happened to be, yes, proved again and again that yes, they, they do demonstrate to learn from the context. So that means that the information you could provide them as an example, what used to be a zero shot, one, one shot, zero shot, it's fine. But the one shot was the very interesting or one shot or a few shots because the few shots shows like actually the example dictates the output of um, the LLA. And of course they got better since then. And rags are in that context, uh, in, you know, the, the, the embodiment of that. How to then leverage the language models, basically train them for every, you know, given, have a, build a large model and then just fine tune more or less, now in, not in the fine tune the, the your says, but by example, by using few short learnings. Um, kind of dictate their outcome. And that's called, that's then formalized into RAG. And that's why RAG is the, the key application layer um, of, of LLMs, right? Everything that you, you can think of is uh, a lot more involves around RAG. That means there's some form of retrieval, a good retrieval gives you a good context. And then there is argumentation that just arguments that retrieved context plus the equation also can be argumented and then put together. And then the LLM does then what it does normally, it generates something, right? So based on um, its, its next word prediction. And that revolutionized everything we, we know, like whether it's audio, video, um, text. So that, that seems to be um, the case. So this week, you go into the very layer of that. So let me stop. That's good. We have question. Abu Bakr. Uh, okay, uh, I have one question. Uh, yeah. When prompt uh, engineering, for example, yeah. when we talk to um, the GPT models like GPT three, four. Yeah. So 
for example, when we say hi or uh, give me uh, this, this and that. So does it uh, automatically wrap around a new prompt to give it to the model before it is no, in, uh, being I processed? mean, the GPT, so you have to separate the GPT, the model, the instruction layer, the chat GPT, and then, of course, the prompt. So you have to, like, you have to distinguish them. The model, the GPT model, normally they call it the base model, you know, like, for example, for chat GPT, you, you choose base models, right? It could be GPT-4.0, GPT-4 Turbo, GPT-3.5 Turbo, or that. So that's the model. The model just is that, that but the chat GPT is instructed, fine-tuned, to be more chat oriented, right? So that means it 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 contains some learning that is very fine tuned to answer, to address uh, people question and answer sense or the chat sense. So it, it is data is trained on you know uh, that human feedback, so reinforcement learning uh, form. So it's trained such that it really is suitable for chat. So now the prompt is what you give to the chat or what you give to a pro to a model. So even if you give it to the chat GPT, chat GPT then you know it's trained on top of it's fine-tuned basically on top of the GPT model. And therefore, like it's basically um it's a fine-tuned model, chat GPT. While if you are giving it directly to the GPT model, then that's prompt. Whatever you give it to the GPT, it's a prompt. It, it doesn't matter. But on top of it, there is a rug, the, the one that constructs that prompt. Knowing the prompt is the key component, so then rugs are basically creating dynamic prompts. So from the prompt, you know, the, the, even if it's, when we say dynamic, it's they give it one shot. They give it context, examples, or a flow, or some context on top of, they pad, they pad your prompt, whatever you, you want to say, like for example, hi, then normally the hi, it's just a, a simple zero shot learning. So that means you say hi, then the, the GPT model continues based on that, you know, then the next possible component. So that means the highest likelihood, the next word. And then it takes all the previous ones and then predicts the next one. So for example, when you say hi, then if it has, uh, a context window of let's say um uh, thousand tokens so until it reaches the next thousand it basically predicts predicts the next token next token next token next token okay so and then when it reaches 1000 or when before that if it reaches whatever it's called the termination token then it stops so is that clear Okay, so that's the case, and we are gonna go diving into precision rag. So you are, you know, rag just simply is very simple. You ex you retrieve something and you put it together, and then you send it a prompt, and it's just about prompt design. But precision is when you want to do something, when you want to control it, when you want to achieve a certain business objective target. That's that's what you need. Okay. So with that, why don't I ask people what they have understood by this week's challenge um, so that, you know, as usual, you rephrase it to everyone. No, um, so who can help or who can try to explain their understanding? What have you understood by this week's challenge? Yeah, maybe just can I ask people who haven't spoken before what their understanding is? Tameskin. Um, yeah, Tameskin. Hi, um, good morning. Yeah. Morning. Uh, so, 
uh, my understanding of this week's challenge is uh, there is a prompt taking in a business a company i think and uh, the main goal the main goal for this project or the importance of the project is that to effectively to, in, to improve or increase the precision or the effectiveness of the prompt engineering uh, and uh, the company focuses on the key service automatic prompt engineering automatic evaluation data generation and prompt testing so prompt engineering uh, uh, the idea is for this automatic prompt engineering to to improve the prompt engineering by by reducing the time and the expert soft required craft prompt manually so generating some service to automatically prompt in uh, prompts and uh, that, uh, on the background it states that the models large language models are required uh, precise and precise prompt to extract uh, the required uh, uh, solution so since it uh, predicts the next token if we give it uh, another if you give it uh, ambiguous prompts it will hallucinate and go beyond the, to the topic so the prompt engineering is important like that and uh, uh, I want to ask a question on yeah. on the second auto automatic evaluation data generation service. Uh, in there, it says generate a diverse test case. So the test case generated is it for the prompt that the automatic prompt uh, generated, and uh, if so, how do we evaluate the metrics for its effectiveness. Yeah. yeah, good good question. And I think it's correct. It is, you are, because as you generate prompts automatically, you need to evaluate their effectiveness, right? So that's a way of um, kind of ensuring the quality. So, and to do that, there are formalisms, the metrics, there are formalisms. Um, and they are, I think, given in the references. So there are a number of formalisms that are used uh, for that. Just uh, so Ragas, for example, is one. Mm. Yeah, so for example, um, so they are okay so if i just search for ragas yeah so understand the need for evaluation of our components and this is ragas is a, a framework for example that provides you with um like gives you a matrix right so for each of your parts it gives you quality metrics some quantified ones and it's one of the most common uh, framework for that so you would know that like the different matrices that are used to evaluate you know when you generate for example it also allows you to generate but then there are others that i will share recently google has uh, not Google. Um, Google has released one uh, for similar pur purposes, but also there are others in terms of code, at least frameworks that are trying to generate uh, really quality data using using basically um, LLMs themselves, right? So they, it's a huge, basically the, the most active field of research now in the area is just, of course generating quality data right so and and that 
that part is important. So yeah, it's a good question. There are formalisms just that given a context generates some evaluation data. That means question and answer or other forms um, and that are suitable to then give you a metric about your prompts, right? The effectiveness of that. So yeah, and also there are manual generations as well. But the automatic ones are covered by Ragas or similar um, frameworks. Does that address some scan your question? Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, Abraham, Shayla, then, and I think I, before Shayla, I, I saw um, there was another hunt, but okay, so let's go, Abraham. Okay, thank you. Uh, good, after, good morning, everyone. Uh, today's, mm -hmm. uh, this week's challenge is about building uh, a precision RAG system. Uh, behind RAG, there is prompt, uh, which is uh, what we are going to build this week. It is an automatic prompt generation system. Uh, it will take, uh, it will accept, it, it will be like, uh, a, the product will be like, there is an interface that will accept the user's all queries. And uh, it will create relevant prompts based on the query, and it will evaluate them, it will rank them, and it will uh, assess which one, which 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 prompt it is the best, the best, uh, the best output for uh, for this challenge. And uh, in a nutshell, we'll build a, a, a an automatic prompt uh, generation system. And uh, the question I had is, what would be the uh, end product would look like? What is it actually we are building? Is there an interface that will list the potential prompts and rank them? Or what is it really, what's working? What is, what is the end product? Yeah, no, again, another excellent question. So I think almost always asking that question is very useful to make it very clear what is the business objective, right? What What is the product? What is the end goal of it? And by the end goal, not only you can ask a little bit further, who's benefiting and for, you know, what kind of, you know, objective, business objective it's addressing, right? So I think that's very relevant question. In this case, it is exactly, think of this uh, promptly take is a company um, that is, uh, the e-business means just it's an online business that you, it's what it's providing is actually just for people to generate good prompts, right? So that means they come to your service and you basic, basically they write what they want and then you give them a good prompt that, so it is, it is going to be, a, you can call it even a chatbot or some kind of like they feel something and you generate. So you ask them some question and then you kind of instruct them to give to provide the best type of prompts or prompt types in this case that they can use on their for their own right and the ability to do now that if you are giving it as an api somebody then can actually you know use it a lot more not only for one but actually for every question before you know they you they ask you then they you get you give them so let, let's imagine you also automate um, you instruct them so that becomes agent level but you also provide a prompt for the data generation or the the, the, the retrieval component so retrieval normally means there's a chunk a bunch of data somewhere and you have to say like just the SQL type you know you you basically pull data um, for that so that means you, the promptly is you can think of it as an API provider that anyone can call it such that they you get they get a good prompt that optimizes their rug system right so that rug system means the very first component is the retrieval so that means you allow them to retrieve so if if they give you of course the schema of the knowledge database you allow them to retrieve uh, the relevant components and then on top of that you ask you give them a prompt to 
improve or argument the question plus the context. And third, of course, the wrapper prompt that, that basically um, that you can send all the context combined plus the question combined as one prompt um, uh, to the LLA. Now, in each of them, you know, how you write this prompt. So the prompt means the combination of it, this everything. How you combine them how you instruct them. So there's a system message and the user message. The system message means you tell how, you know, the assistant, in this case, the model, the GPT or the Gemini models, what to do. So it's like the, the, the kind of, it's a front layer that controls. So for example, you can just tell them if the user is asking about, I don't know, some uh, prohibit or something, you know, don't answer, things like that. So you instruct, it's an instruction for how the model should operate. You know, the GPT or Gemini or other models operate. And then the user message or the other conversations are more for, okay, now you pass it, you know, that, that's inside the model, like how you instruct the models, are basically the inside, the internal part of the model, how you influence it, right? So it, this influence of the model inside, influence of the model um, outside, so the model inside is just the one, just the weights, just aligned. And the next, you know, they just predict some probability of a vector, and that vector is your token, and therefore it goes on, right? So the highest probability part of the token will be generated. So it's that the user, like the actual prompt, is influencing that component, and then the system message is influencing the outside of the model. That means you know, the filtering mechanism and every other thing that um, the model is trained to listen to. So, simply, promptly is providing this end-to-end -end service such that it provides the right prompt that influences both the outside component and the inside component of the model. And the data that goes inside are the questions user asked plus the context that are retrieved. Okay? So, and promptly needs, of course, as a business to survive, needs to demonstrate how efficient their um, their generated prompts are compared to the baseline people rights. So for that, it needs benchmarking their their effectiveness. That's what you need to evaluate and generate evaluation data to, you know, as your business case. So let me stop there. And because what I say it is very concrete and important to understand and is it clear no uh yes but i only have one question where is where do they get these contexts like uh, i'm not seeing any data or any where can they get this difference yeah i mean that's of course so you have to generate it's basically that you have to apply many prompt techniques, right? So there are like a lot more of like starting from, for example, one strategy is that somebody gives you a prompt and you improve by asking, by applying it, you know, knowing their interest, you can edit. It's more like editing. It's like, if you think of it, if you have a person, you are very specialized in prompt engineering, somebody gives you like what they want and what they what they are planning to ask, they say, Oh, I want to, you know, I want to know the stock markets, you know, that is performing well. And I'm asking it, you know, give me the stock markets that are, you know, the symbols that are performing well. And you say, yeah, that's that's fine as a prompt engineer. But no, no, you, you want to ensure maybe just add a little bit more saying like, make sure your, you know, that your answer accurately reflects or uh, rush, give, you also should give a rationally why the you know why these are correct or why your answer is should be trusted now that's an addition right so that the prompt the the specialized or the expert pro, uh, in, uh, prompt editor engineer is adding those elements so it's about editing so somebody gives you and that already is a prompt that's already your prompt but you're trying to improve that prompt given of course additional data sets that are additional data sets you can be asking about the facilitating to a person, okay, this seems to be okay for this. Is that what you want? And the person says yes or no, and things like that. So the, the start is the person's interest and the person's starting position of the 
the prompt. You then take that one, improve it, so that you can provide that. Then you you give it another prompt. So the person gives you prompt, you transform that prompt into a good prompt. Is that clear? Um, yes, I guess. Oh, yeah. So it's think of it. Promptlytic is transforming prompts from bad prompts, which is the original ones, to good prompts that are generated. And because everything is a prompt that's written, even interest written as like, I want to have that is a prompt, right? So you are asking, you know, maybe if you are confused, it's because a prompt, you think it's different. A prompt is anything that's anyone that writes, right, in, in a natural language sense. And, but that's just, some prompts are not good and some prompts written in a certain way are good. So the prompt we take is an engine that takes some random, you know, prompts written without really a prompt engineer's uh, knowledge and promptly take, takes that one, processes them and provides a very, a prompt that actually uh, achieves very good results. So, okay, so hopefully that is clear. Nashayla. Um, hi, can you hear me? Hi, yes. Okay, so, <clears throat> sorry. So like I wanted to give my understanding of the project, yeah. of what, what I have understood. So the first thing is that, is that like this project is like a little bit different from like the previous projects we've been doing in that we're not supposed to like, it's not asking us to solve a problem that the company has. It's actually telling us to do what the company does. So yes. um, the company, improving, so the company yes. So it's really, it's an, it's in a good way of putting, it's improving. Maybe that promptly take has already a solution, but almost always it needs improvement. So in a way that is an, almost always it's finding employees of uh, promptly take would really almost always work on this to make sure that they, they are you know a step ahead of the business so that means almost always they quantify they do so yes it's you're you're working on the core business of promptly take but promptly take has also to achieve this for example it it has engineering components right to allow apis to run parallelly to infer and things like that so maybe you're asked just more on the team that comes up with a strategy right and yeah. who evaluate so yes you're the, at the core business of promptly take okay yeah thank you so like that's the first thing i understood then um the second thing um i figured i understood was that promptly does like according to that document automatic prompt generation automatic evaluation data generation and prompt texting and ranking which is basically what i've understood is like um, a user is able to give a description, like normally, like for example, chat GPT, when you're asking it a question, like that's a prompt, that's a user prompt. So um, when it comes like for chat GPT, depending on what question you give it, or like here we are calling them prompts, but they're basically, okay, for what I understood, they're basically the questions we ask the models. So I'll use GPT as an example. So you give GPT the question, and then it gives you an answer. Depending on how you've structured that question, like that will depend that will really format the answer that gpt will give you so what promptly tech does is or what we are going to be doing is actually now now the user instead of going first to chat gpt to a model it will first come to us the user will first come to us then ask us like give us a question the way they would want to format the question and then um our system is supposed to produce a prompt that is good for the model like a prompt that is going to give um really effect an, an effective answer to the project to the to the whatever to the model and then yeah. also the user is going to be able to figure out um how good this prompt is because we are going to also provide a test for the prompt that we have provided and we're also going to have a ranking for that prompt so the user is going to be confident using this prompt inside a model because they will be able to see the percentage maybe the rank that we'll give will be probably in percentage or something and the rank will be yeah. informed by the rank will be informed by the tests that we are going to provide so that's what i have understood 
Yeah. And then uh, according to the rank, let me just put it because I mean you you really mentioned it really well and good. So let me just enrich it so that everyone also understands. So you can think of as a business also you can think of it. For example, somebody has a variety of um, prompts that they want to use, but they don't know which one is good. Right now, as a business, you might you know okay they can put your their prompt. Like, okay, here, this is my one prompt, this is two prompt, this is a third prompt. Which one is good? You give them a ranking for the goal that they mentioned, right? So that means you have, you ask them what is your goal, and then you, you know, what's your context? So you have a form that they fill, and then they give you prompts, and you basically just give them for that what would have been, like, what would be the accuracy of it. Now, how you do that? It is a lot more about by generating, of course, data like from the context, you know, by generating like evaluation data sets and now running, because if you just run it only once, you don't know which one, which one is performing well. But given that promptly is in the in your second part, you have developed a capacity to automatically generate evaluation data sets. Now you you know, and they are optimized. So that means you can provide this service, again, paid service, to your users so that they can they can select their prompts as well. Or they can ask you, as part of the second project that you're doing, that can be a business in its own. Because they, they say like, okay, I have I have these prompts, but I don't have a use case, a data that I would, I, I, to evaluate it, if it's good or not. Now they can come and they say, okay, you again just tell them what's your data and what's your interest. And it generates again data for them. And then they can use that data to evaluate future their entire system. Right. So you see, like now in both cases, it's not just only one thing, it's everything is a business for promptly. And you're making sure that in each of them you are excellent, means each of them can be a service, a paid service. But also they can be combined, just like that you can combine, you know, prompt ranking using now the automatic evaluation data that they want, that becomes it's one of its components, right? So you can combine also the generation component, you can combine given if they give you like, you know, what questions can I answer, for example, using this data. Now in this case, okay, you have to generate both the prompts as well as the evaluation data sets and test, find the best prompts, evaluate them. And then it, you say, okay, these are the type of questions this data can answer best. So you see that becomes another service. So, I mean, I am putting it much more in that sense and anyone can ask. So you can proceed, but if this is not clear, anyone can ask. So it is independent as well as combined. So each of these sets are interrelated to form a promptly service. Okay, proceed then, Chair. Um, okay, thank you. You've actually clarified something I had, like a question I had. But um, also I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask, so like in, in this one, there are different tasks. What you've said, if what, what I've understood from you is like the different tasks. There's the first one that is prom prompt generation. Then there's also prompt testing. Then there's also prompt ranking. So you can do them, okay, individually, promptly can do them individually, but then also they can also be done together, like as a combination. These are, these are combination of all. But, but it, it's so interrelated. How can you create a good prompt without knowing what is good? And to oh, know what okay. is good, you need to know a good, a good evaluation data set. To evaluate, to create a good evaluation data set, you need uh, a good prompt. Right yeah. and and to get a good prompt, you have to rank different prompts, right? So they yeah. it's it's interrelated. So it's about ensuring, starting, bootstrapping, and creating. Okay. So it's not like yeah, like I do this and I do that and I do that. Of course, you can. That is what is recommended first for just the first to create just an automatic prompt instead of just relying mostly on the data, you might rely on 
good practices uh, of prompt engineering, right? And then after that, once you create, like for example, and once you get a good one, then you, you know, so it's it's kind of bootstrapping um, for that service. So, but they're all interrelated. It's not like you would do one only without the other. Like to know what mm -hmm. is good, to define a good prompt, you know, just generating a prompt is fine, but to, to know to generate a good prompt, you need to and you need to do you need to have evaluation data sets as well as um also a ranking prompt ranking okay yeah and to uh, do prompt ranking you need good evaluation data sets so it's interrelated so it's better to think of it as a bootstrapping process that means that you do you have to do some things first and then apply that and then over time they all interrelate, right? Because they one improves the other, and then that improvement improves the other as well. So it becomes uh, feeding each other. So every whenever you improve one thing, it improves the the entire system. Okay. Okay. okay then proceed. So after we figured out how to do the prompt um, generation, prompt testing, and prompt rank ranking, the next step is supposed to develop um, an interface whereby a user can be able to use it. They can use these facilities that we we provided, where they can be able to um, re like do everything. Like they can put in a description of what they want, get prompts, yeah. receive um, a test, like receive the testing matrix for the prompt, and also a ranking of the prompts that they have then exactly. yeah so, um, sorry yeah so that's basically earlier as i said it's more think to think everything that you have done to put it as a business yeah so in a sense like not only just now i think this proposed this project asks you also to think exactly in the way that i said like okay now you have done this how can you put it as a customer facing service right so normally that is a design a business thinking as well yeah. so like the capacity is there but you ask like okay what do people want to to see like how do you know can i provide api for this and you know can i provide interfaces so that people just can come and what would be relevant and but just the, the what is asking is simple yeah you design and you implement just at least something that asks their interest and then they select what they want to do and for what they do for example you if it's just prompt generating then you but you know prompt generating basically think of it as editing you are editing their prompt such that it really is better and but internally when you edit to choose the right edit you are ranking of course but you can use that internal in that case internal service as an as also explicit service by saying if you have multiple prompts we can also give you a rank that's another api so it's it's a it's a thinking it's like thinking rotating the same thing everything you've done it's interrelated and one uses the other but also can be sold independently or as part of a service yeah thank you um, okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Um, then the last thing I understood, but I would now I have a question on is the RAG, which involves retrieval of data and generation, like acquiring data and generating text as well. So um, normally, from what I, from what I know, um, when we're using the models for text generation, for text generation, RAG is implemented in that it is the one that is used to um get the data that is going to help in text generation but then now since we're going to mostly focus on prompt engineering and not like generation of okay it's still text generation but then now this one is prompt based are we going to use reg, rag sorry rag for the same purposes like um using it for fetching to allow us to fetch data and also yeah enable us to generate text yeah, so I mean, so every, yeah, RAG, I mean, the part which is different is just the RNA, right? So the R is for retrieval. Now, anything can be retrieved, right? From your own, uh, just memory database, right? Just that, oh, okay, if the user interest is that, I'm gonna retrieve 
you know, how do you retrieve the right, um, the right prompt for you to start from, right? So you, you, you can have like a database of like good prompts, um, just a chunk of them. And maybe for, for what particular case you need to retrieve that database of good prompts. So simply that by having, by building already a number of good prompts for different problems. So that means you can say like, you know, from the internet, I scrape um, like, okay, for this type of question, this, this type of prompt was used and delivers really good quality. So let's imagine you have a database of prompts and then whenever you, you, you know, that's a bootstrapping phase. So because you start from that, when then when you're selecting one first, then you select your retrieve. And then after retrieval, you say like, okay, for these types of problems, these were the good examples. Now give me something similar for this one. So you see like now already you are generating prompts, but through a RAG system. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes it makes perfect sense. Thank yeah, you. Rank itself is just data, another data, right? So sorry, prompt itself is another data in this case. So prompt the generation of the prompt is like generating a point or generating an answer for a company's question. Well, you know, what does your product do? You know, that like the solution for that, what does your product your company do requires ranks that is saying go to the knowledge base, extract you know what the company you know where the information about the company and what it does and rephrase it and put give me as an answer that's yeah. what the rug normally do now in that case it was to answer a question now the same rug can do now given an a, a rug you know a prompt database somebody is asking give me a good prompt for this interest now go to the the, the rug database select the rights for that type of questions and then pass it to the LLM, LLM analyze and answers, uh, an answer, in this case, the answer is a, an, another prompt somebody can use, including with maybe where they can put their context, right? It just like, it, it can have like placeholders or maybe it's written even with other, some, uh, let's say, Jinja template type or some other template type. So you see like, just a prompt is another, data point or an answer point in this case. And a, a collection of prompts is the knowledge base. So whenever you think of RAG, think of it, you know, in data engineering, you had, I think you had to think about um, ETL and LT. It's the same. It's like what you consider extraction, loading and transformation really changes based on just which phase you are and what, you know, what is saved, what is transformed, what is extracted really is where you start doesn't matter. It's not like, oh, you have to just extract something from some source, but anything can be composed. It's a philosophy. That means there is some form of extraction, what you call extraction. You define what is extraction. And then once you define that extraction, you define also what is loading or transformation. Because the, but the philosophy is that if you are using ALT, that you are actual the usual etl for example then your goal is that you are doing some really transformation to answer something but what you consider extraction transformation and loading you know you could be just loading it to a, a person's chatbot in that case right it's not it's it's the philosophy that matters right so decomposes your series of questions and you can replace any you know, even a RAG system by kind of ETL saints, if you want, as long as you you define what extraction means in this case, what load is in that case, and transformation on that case, as long as it makes sense, right? So the same is ALT, it's a framework, and I think it's not just, and the same is here, RAG. So what you consider retrieval, it's basically the concept is some something to, to get something, the right uh, element you know, the right context, the right thing. Like just that would be an input. And argumentation is modifying transformation, right? So it really comes from the same thing. You are extracting, you are transforming, and then you are uh, basically loading, 
in this case the loading component is just you know you load it into the llm and llm does what what it wants so it's like so the you know even a prompt generation uh, uh evaluation data set all of them can be casted into rug i i probably have confused uh, some people by this but it's just because i think a lot of people um may not connect these dots that's why i wanted to connect dots it is not just a new something right it is the same frameworks that you know in data engineering are applied now to a new domain with the right wording of course so that they uh, they will basically work um, in this new new just in the generative ai context okay hopefully hopefully you are still um okay so then there was a question by was that was that is that because it was addressed people raised or is it just timing or are there any questions abu bakar uh, okay uh, it's it's not actually more like a question but uh, maybe uh, i had the uh, oh, I was actually testing, seeing some uh, resources on Saturday. This project is rather an interesting one. So I was seeing some uh, uh, data on LLM. So previously, I used to use like prompts, those charts for prompts and everything. So uh, I, I came across some uh, uh, resource. Like I think if you know it, I don't know, but it's called Fabric. Uh, it's um, yeah. an interesting gate. So, yeah, is it? Is it not fabric? Is it not a packet? Uh, yeah, it's it's called fabric, I guess. So yeah, I'll send you. I the it's a packet project. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's more like what we have been doing. So what is what is practically saying is there are too many prompts and we don't know which ones are good ones. Uh, so we need a better way of prompting. So he calls them para, um, para, para, parameters or patterns. Yeah. So I think he calls them for, for patterns, and uh, it says that AI doesn't have the capabilities problem. So integration problem. I think this project would be using that. So my my thing is uh, the the thing is trying to do uh, is wrap the any prompts you're asking wrap it in a better prompt, uh, so as an input, so it gives the model, uh, to get the model, to get the model a better response out of the model. So my thing, my question is, uh, if we are wrapping with too much text, aren't we using up, because since uh, it is, uh, we are using a small token, token window, so if we are wrapping around a uh, much larger text aren't we using up a much token on the model yeah so, i mean so, uh, that's that's you know that's engineering i think earlier i mentioned first is a scientific like, you know the application level whether it is you know but and then after that's the optimization level of course you could do this thing also there isn't one way to do it you could do it by agents basically you fire agents they they just go and search and do and find something and you know you, you give them um, tools to actually not only search even in this case the databases the good prompts can be from the internet you know things like that but i think for now yes i mean if you think of it in terms of token it would take some tokens but afterwards you would let's say you would work on the optimization level where um you you know where you can improve but for now it is about understanding what a precision how can you get to a precision rack system because without these elements evaluation knowing the uncertainty you would not be able to easily do right so i think there are many many systems that does like something like fabric but or, already even there are companies that are sold um, that does this, right? So you are like the continuation of this. You know, you, you have to know it's like this field is very active. That means there is so much people are doing. And some 
when they are very promising, they just get sold or, you know, like they, they become big. So it, it's just, it's still in the exploration and everybody, whether you know, bigger companies, Google, Microsoft, will have their own something and um, they try, some try the other way to try to make it like the prompt irrelevant because they just do it themselves, agents and others. As I said, they are many. So the isn't, it's not about one thing, but understanding the very essence of like the, what ha, what are the resources is that you have LLMs that just generate, that learn from the context, the in context, and they different experimentation by different people and lots and lots of work on, on that showed they respond better. It's like teaching kids, right? They respond better for certain prompts. So especially at least because when we think of RAG, we're thinking of not our custom, let's say, Lama 3, whatever we trained, but more like the general bigger LLMs. So you, because let's say they, they're just going to continuously update them and it's about learning their properties. How do they, you know, how do you get a good result, consistent result? Already OpenAI is already improving every time to make it consistent, to give it a seed, you know, stuff like that. But you also like learn the different parameters because for the different problems, a certain change might really give it, uh, generate a good result. Now, not only just getting a good result once in a while is good, but consistent precision means that a predefined precision you can achieve, okay? So yes, you're, you're gonna encounter lots of tools on this area. And we already, I think, provided uh, maybe just somewhere some I sometimes have difficulty getting exactly what I want from the challenge documents, but there and somewhere there, there is already um, pro products that are that has been used and sold um, or funded really a lot of, raised lots of uh, money for that. Um, yeah, so if not, we will share, but just there, there's gonna be, it's maybe just on the reference. Yeah, so this one, for example, uh, promptly is actually the name even we take it from this promptly generated, right? If you check that one, they do exactly similar service. And if you know, if you look at their history, they, they were sold, I think, yeah, it's like, or they raised a couple of, a lot of million dollars for that. So yeah, there are many, even now it's like, we haven't updated the reference, but they, we will add as well, just once we see the fabric, how um, how it fits. If it fits, then we will we will we will see. We will add it. But there are many. Just just you have to know the field is very active. So that means every every time there is a lot more going on. But the key concept is not going to change. It's about for the different models to influence them better and to measure the accuracy, how good they do it in a certain way, and to provide that because enterprises cannot win just, or you cannot make it an enterprise if you don't know the risk of using it. So that means the risk of using it means knowing where it fails and where it doesn't fail, at least a certain level of confidence. Okay, so maybe Abu Bakr just, if it's a follow-up question, uh, you can ask and then we'll go to Japanese. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, so one, uh, I have two things to touch up on. So one of it is like, why is the, for example, we give it the same prompt for the modem and why is it generating like two different things? Like I want to understand why is it doing that? Because because, because, because LLMs, I mean, simple, simply uh, you have seen it. LLMs are not, they're just probabilistic models in a sense that they just, you give them and then they, they pass through something and it's not really 
in, internally there is there are weights right that just influence so many things so that means it is not uh it as as it goes through the process it's not deterministic process so what you are asking is that if it was deterministic so that means like it, every time that as it chooses there are many random elements inside deterministic means like it's not like uh, it's not a deterministic formula that it computes it does so many processes that makes it and the basically like a random more or less a process that are semi-random right so, uh, so you, you can't expect the same thing you give it and you don't expect the same output because it's just probability right so probability means you know by its nature you are estimating something like and then that estimates change you know for the same for the same input um it's it's changed it's a yeah. little bit hard but to understand but uh, like for example if we toss a coin like there is 51 49 pro probability something like it's yeah. a probability but exactly. still it's, we, we yeah. can know. so like exactly it's like 50 50 but you can't know the next the next one like the next one and the next one so when something okay, is a so probabilistic model it goes through you're generating i mean you're generating inside that inside that it is modeling a probability and it's estimating okay like you know like exactly that and it's it's really very similar to a twin cost so in general you achieve something okay, for the same for the same thing you get something but it is not a, you know like uh, in the long term you are guaranteed but in the one sample you're not guaranteed so what it chooses for the next word is not guaranteed um but it's in 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 general it provides the same thing right so okay so, so it's exactly the point also okay okay i think somewhat clear uh so my next question is like why automatic prompt generation like what exactly means automatic in the prompt generation yeah, just apis like let's say imagine just you 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 don't want <laughs> manual because if it's manual then you have to somebody will have to give you and you have to craft it but if you want to make it as a service so that many people can use it it should just be automatic right yeah. what other ways there Okay, yes, I thought it was another. Yeah. yeah, so the automatic in this case is really such that you don't, you know, it's a strategy that you define it in your code such that the code works and automatically you get a good prompt with a certain accuracy. And then that becomes a service. Okay, then Japanese. Okay, uh, my question is. Uh, as uh, you said, rags, rag is used to give, I think, uh, uh, context for the LLM so that it's not will, will not be hallucinating or give uh, out of uh, date data. Yeah. So uh, we use uh, data set, maybe external data documents or data, so that it could uh, give a proper answer. But for now, you said that uh, now we are using the, the, the data set that we are using to for rack system is not actually another data, but uh, prompts, uh, different prompts, I think. Uh, for one of so them. What? For one of them. Yeah, so, so for prompt generating, you could use the uh, database of prompts. Yeah. As data. Yeah. So do we uh, say it like a, a good uh, prompt are we giving it a good prompt and an, an answer proper answer is that like that's hello can you hear me Hello. Hello. Sorry, just my connection died. So say it again, Japanese. Okay. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, 
uh, for now for this project uh, uh, my thinking is that we are going to use uh, a data set uh, with uh, prompts that may be a good prompts and an answer is that it for the uh, to use it yeah, I, as mean, a, I, think, I think like let, let me just put it it for one part yes for prompt generation one case is that you may use just a database of prompts uh together how it's you know by collecting some by yes you can use it so that you can start saying like okay you know what should be that the, the architecture of my prompt should look like by learning you know collect as many you can go to lang chain lang smith um i think this is basically a database of uh prompts people have written for different problems right so collect from there and create a database just on chroma for example just add them and then you can retrieve another one is when you test of course you have to use for example the user wants it maybe on a pdf some pdfs that contains about banks so in, in this case you can use uh, or you can use one data sets for um, model generation right so i don't think we gave you all of any of that but when you develop you can't you can't just develop data generation on just on the fly right so so when you want to do this one automatic validation data then you need to use a data that you that you like of course we if you want if you don't find i mean you can find you can use any data including our challenge documents so I think one of the data you can use is the challenge documents so far from Ten Academy, and all you want is basically that as as a as a way of like, okay, how can I generate now evaluation data for my prompts? Because my prompts could be asking about you know what are the tasks you know uh, and this and that equation and answer. So after I want to evaluate how good I am answering um, these questions. So maybe basically I can prepare a manual annotated data as well as an automatic evaluation script or code. Then I will evaluate again a seat such that I can also measure how good it is. And uh, and so you see, like you have to use certain data to mirror how users would use you, right? Because the users probably would have data when they ask you to generate evaluation data. They give you. They must give you some data. Right. So on that, that you, you, you will generate from that. So they will probably upload a PDF and ask you, OK, like now generate evaluation data for my prompts um, so that I, I can use them. So I think in the future project, what you do is the same thing for a legal documents. So now you have to generate like we'll give you some sample uh, legal documents and you generate from them evaluation data sets and you measure how good is your chatbot in answering certain questions so in this case you can use the, the challenge documents so when you and i think it's a good question you are asking when you understand the challenge you ask this type of questions and i think it's slightly it is not described well but that's exactly the point it's okay. when you understand uh, you ask the right question yeah okay my second question is that uh, for when we design a prompt or when we uh, set a prompt when or when we design a rack uh, is it uh, subjective to a specific model so can we use uh, uh, any uh, prompt that we design to any of models any models uh, and also can we uh, 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 is that a, a subjective to a specific model or what kind of model do you use for this project i, I mean I, I think that's a very interesting one i mean you should test it i can't i don't know the answer my general answer my feeling is that it should be the same but the architecture depends so i think you should tell us on on maybe next week how did you find whether you know the same prompt works for gemini and uh GPT the same or Lama three open source models versus that. I I think it's an interesting question. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. I think it's yeah. Just you test them, and maybe just 
yeah, it's a good thing to to know. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Michael. Okay. Thank you. I think some of the questions been answered, and you touch it up a little bit. But uh, one of my questions is. Uh, how can we so it is i think that this week's project is a little bit vast uh, and big so how can we measure like the target or say, our success like, can we use one model and uh, see if, if it improves with our prompt or yeah. as you said can you specific uh, like use one industry yeah. like for example i think so it's like just right now let's imagine just even if you you really you know Target some, like if you already know the data, that's good. Target the data that you know, right? So that it's exciting for you as well. And if you have people that you can show, you can talk, they give you data. So at some point, and this, they can be helpful with this one, that's great as well, right? So, but otherwise just use the challenge document. So that's fine. But in terms of the, the success criteria, it's very important. First is, really have you understood these intricate things like have you asked enough questions have you really detailed down the things that are you are comfortable and things that you are not comfortable and have you chased down and really got the grasp because you this thing is going to repeat and a lot of people will hire you for this most of the time and this gets more complex and complex as you build chatbots and things as you build more uh, you know so agents so a lot more of it if you really nail it down this component like these three areas and how they interrelate and the need for them and where data is important how you test it's like the usual the old machine learning comes here as well just you know splitting data into tests and thing and then measuring f score and all that so if you first is that part like can you discuss on monday next week can you really make a, another person understand the value as well as the complexity and as well as the result you get? If you do that, that's one metric. And the second is, of course, how much have you done in these three areas that are asked? And, um, you know, were you able to arrive to the point just with even a simple data? Like, you know, and the third part is, were you able to really put together everything and build a product? That can be tested so that's like the, the last one so i think that is exactly as it is ordered is the importance of like that those tasks you know, the first part is really understanding it really getting the hang of it right just what what it means i try to really relate it with data engineering and you know connecting dots so that you can relate with what you have but it's that part and the second is really this adding you know completing them the three projects, right? So the three areas. And, and then the, the last one is, of course, putting together um, as a product. So this way, if you have done that, you succeeded. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. And my other question is, uh, it's not related in this week, maybe it's related in the last week, maybe you can't stop me, it's not related, but like uh, when we are trying to align a large language model, like last time we used fine tuning and now we are using RAG and prompt engineering, so can we use like translation model for the last week's project, for example, by translating the questions or prompts from the low source language like that of Amharic or Swahili to a high level, a high level language like English. So what we will do is we, we when someone asks a query or asks a question, we in Amharic we will change it to English then so that we can we can use the 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 large models like like print in trillions of data. We can leverage that because in my understanding uh, Fine tuning means from big data, right? So because you don't have big data in Amharic or other low level language, can we do this like translating the only the, the language based? Then after that, the, the questions will be answered with the model. Then after that, we will the, the, the answer will be translated again in Amharic or in Swahili. It's a long process, but 
can we do yeah. it? It's a, an interesting project. We, we might we might design one around that um, because we don't know, but it seems interesting. So we will probably design as that as for one week, um, and and while as, as add it as one task, and um, so yeah, it's good. So especially for some predefined like legal documents. Um, so when we do the legal one, maybe we will add that one as a test case. I think that's an interesting, interesting one. I don't know the answer. Okay, thank but you. Good, good, good that, you know, these are type of questions. It can even make us work harder and see if it is relevant. I mean, it's definitely worthwhile to know the answer for, I think, Earlier, Japes asked also one question that is good to have in mind, and um, this is another one. Great, Abraham. Uh, yes, on task four, the, uh, on prompt testing and ranking, uh, could you give us more uh, detail about the testing and ranking, especially on the ELO rating system? It will uh, even evaluate the previous matchups. So, uh, how does it work? Do we really have to store the previous queries and the results? Yeah. Um, I think I. So, um, so, this is again, you know, almost always when when you are ranking something so there are i think pairwise is here maybe yeah, it's like the, so a lot more of the ranking problems are associated to you know whether how how much are you looking like you know how much uh, so the monte carlo for example is one component where you're randomly sampling these different sets and you are as you are ordering them and in such a way that then when one comes most often in the top, then it, it's given a higher rank. So here it's very similar. I think in, in this case, um, I mean, I, I probably won't be able to describe well because I have to look exactly now, I have to refresh my memory, the exact mathematical uh, differences. But I mean, I will just describe, and then next time on Wednesday, you can ask me the same, and then I will uh, explain. But the, the the key component in ranking is uh, just this is just in, in general how it's a comparative probably. Uh, you know, it's within we, you're you're comparing things within a set, right? So you have a defined set. You're not asking whether this is answering the the question or not. You are just trying to say which one is better, and you assume you have uh, basically what considers in this case a win, but in other cases it's called uh, competitiveness or in, uh, it's kind of index, right? You know, for example, out of a hundred, you you might have a grade for them, and but the grade, um, so more than a grade, let's say fitness, like normally the the, the variable, and now you are comparing. Of course, the hardest part is computing the fitness, of course. But you you have a relative metric that you are trying to say, like, okay, if I use this and I use that, and what are my dimensions metrics that I am I am using uh, to measure in this case, for example, a win, a number of times it wins. So which means if you have prepared the data so far, and for each of them, and the data has a label, right? So that means what is a good output for it for it to be and then after running your prompts on these sets of questions and these prompts would give you an output for let's say 100 cases and then you say how much of it of course from this is more close to the within ragas you can measure that how much of it is where um, um close to the answer and then with respect to others so in this one just as it's written here not just the number of wins but also the strengths of the opponents each prompt has defeated so that means like it, you're you're taking into account not only the the two a binary case but also how that 
your opponent how much it has won before right or that means how much was you know it's basically awaiting its current performance so far so both are being when they are competing it's a binary case but they get weighted or their their win rates their win count is actually weighted by how much they have defeated so far so this basically is a more evolving involving to compute because you're not just only keeping track of you know which one but you're keeping track of also its history so i think the main difference probably with from a pairwise comparison is that it is a weighted um based on history so but for a more technical one i think as either in one of the tutorials you will you will get more but does that make sense does that explain to you yes sir it does okay wonderful okay so i hope it's clear uh hillary yeah can i go ahead yeah okay so like for for the Hillary rating i wanted to say something i understood i i was i was particularly interested in that because i like chess so uh i yeah what i understand is that when let's say you have test cases uh you have four prompts you want to compare so you yeah. you you kind of compare you take one prompt compare with uh each other prompt individually and then since you are starting with a let's say an uh like a base rating for each like let's say 100 normally it's in chess 100 you you compare with the other prompt for one test case and then you see how it performs you update its rank you give you give uh, you give the points to the winner and then uh, deduct the points to the loser and then you go on comparing that way until you come up with the uh, the winner on all the fours and one thing i wanted to ask about that is where did the test case come from like well, i i know like maybe you are generating from uh, the model yeah. from the model yes, so yes. i mean we, because the because the test cases may be a lot for that one prompt how do we pick the test case? You generate, right? The, so now, and then once you generate, you do, you separate them into validation and um, so basically, so when you generate, you are generating, so from the database, you, you know, the, the data, for example, you know, so, okay, let's say you take one um, paragraph, and you split it, I mean, the, you say it is like, okay, LLM give me uh, a question uh, and answer for this, you know, for this paragraph. And then the LLM will just rephrase it saying like, okay, you know, what is the name of the person who did this? And then the name of the person, the answer is that. Okay, now that's one question. You know, the LLM had at first the data, it looks at it very well. Now, in the test case, of course, the LLM may have the data or not, right? The prompts, the prompts that you are adding and the retrieval that you collected um, may miss that. So that's what you are testing against, right? So at first, if it's manual, that's exactly what you do. You may be asking some complex question that is inside the information, or if it's not, it says, I don't know. But now, for example, in, in the actual prompts if the actual prompt it says if you don't know don't you know say i don't know then that prompt will win but a prompt that's similar but it doesn't have that would mean that llm would be you know um, basically dreaming right so is it, does, that, does that make sense it's, is it it is the prompt is how what it instructs the llm to answer and in your first case, though, like in the data generation, and you are asking it very simple down into pieces, right? Into question and answer. So there you assume that the LLM is not going to make anything funny. It might, you have to check, but it's not. While in the testing case, the prompt may limit the, the LLM to do this or to do that, or, you know, it might be forced, you know, it's, it, each different prompts have different characterization and based on that the LLM is answering and you are evaluating that. 
Okay, so my question is, uh, if you have a test case, aren't you assuming that that uh, because you are using that to compare the performance of the prompt, aren't you assuming that that is the, always the correct case? Because um, I mean, if you have a if you have a prompt, even if it's like already the winner or like the best, you you may have different answers from the uh, from the LLM. So how do you pick the like the right one, or are we uh, are we going to uh, go with the with the one that the LLM produces uh, the first or not, something like that. Uh, because for let's say factual information, it's you can you can always uh, validate that, and uh, let's say uh, if it's like uh, the number of countries, you can only have let's say four in Africa, and that will always be like the right test case. But if you have something else like um, yeah, generate a poet, uh, a poem you you will yeah. have probably many different test cases yeah uh, i mean i i was disconnected again and i haven't heard but the last statement you said is correct mostly the data you generate for cases where it's known factual is what you should be saying advertising yeah that's uh, the accuracy is for those type of things for art you might need to really design the test cases manually. Okay, understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Great, yeah, but I think, again, whenever you look at these things, uh, the most important part from algorithm perspective, whether it's Monte Carlo, ELO, and others, uh, there are also other just way you know it, it, it's the way of understanding is that wh what is its difference so most most algorithms are similar they just differ on a very particular area so for example pairwise comparison if they are are they pairwise or are they comparing are they looking for example if it's not if it's wise or if it's like um you know looking at a point wise ranking is a lot more complex and i think it was explained um by hillary as well that's good but when you understand it the usual questions are is it pairwise and if so if it's pairwise how is it different from a normal pairwise rank and the pairwise rank is it just then it's take is it taking the weights of a previous one like in this case i mean again i will you know the tutorials should make it clear does this keep like does this select does it do filtering on what it wins previously which means is it computing the weights of um the weights based on for example its previous win win loss ratio if that is the case that's just the, usually it's a, a change in weight are in algorithms naming sometimes but I might be wrong, so, um, but yeah, it's in general, the way I would understand them is that names, people give to names and their value, and normally it's also computational complexity is what matters. So if it's computationally complex, some things might be good, but they might be not relevant sometimes if you are doing for fast system, but just checking them and understanding how do you rank is key. Um, because one simple way is, of course, is asking the LLM to rank it themselves, it's like by, you know, so which is, which is another ranking, right? But of course you, you want something in this case, precision means you want something that you can test that you don't depend on an LLM that is a probabilistic. So that's another way just, just to, to highlight. Okay. We are way over time and I hope that you got a clearer idea and i would say i think michael asked it earlier the key point is what is the end goal the end goal is first 
to be able to explain in different languages, you know, that the different interrelation in this rug and how, why it's important and what are the key components. I think I mentioned already in context learning, you have to understand what is in, in context learning, which makes everything work, which makes rug work. And once you understand in context learning, then how RAG is a framework, just like, you know, um, ETL, ELT, and in that sense that it provides contexts uh, using its structured approach, it provides context and it's applicable to any domain. And once you have understand that, okay, now I want, but to really do well in RAG, I probably need to, there are certain components I can improve. One is that me, instead of uh, crafting uh, prompts myself that I can use the LLM, um, different types of LLMs for that purpose. And that is, you know, how to generate prompts and how to select and then how to generate evaluation data sets and automatically and use them and then how to rank if I have candidates. And there are frameworks for each of these things and then I will combine and form a product ultimately. So, and distilling that knowledge and answering certain questions like, you know, uh, how good is your prompt and wh which domain, I think Hilary uh, earlier mentioned, which domain is it works more often, you know, and your accuracy, can it be maintained in the wild as well for how much have you tested? Things like that, as long as you can consider that and have a, a feeling then in the next project gets easier and it gets concretized, okay? So I will leave you with that. And generate as much question so that it's super clear to you because this is where most things happen these days. And the leveraging LLMs um, means whether you do uh, agents or not, um, the key component is really thinking about precision, right? So that's why the title is there. How do I get, you know, something realistic, reliable, enterprise grade rug system and what are the components of it? So I will leave you with that, generate as much questions. Hopefully on Wednesday, there will be a QA and a uh, with me as well and we can talk. Um, and I hope that not only a few of, I think today a number of new people also ask, but I want more people to ask, more people to come up with questions. I want us to not have time because everybody wants to ask just like today. So yeah, thanks for that. And yeah, let's stop the academy uh, team.